welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, this little tiny corner of the internet where we value common sense and logic and rationality above all other things. It is a very small corner of the internet, but it does exist, I promise you. Um, and today we've got what looks to be a beautifully original puzzle by Star Warigami, which is quite a pseudonym. Um, and it involves basically going on a whisper stop world tour from these cities, these um, these cages in the grid represent different airports, and our job is to travel from one to the other. I think we go from from Berlin, which is this one, to Moscow, which is that one, by travelling along these whisper lines. It's a quality idea, it really is. Um, and uh, this has been recommended to us by the Discord server, which is marvellous because we know it's going to be a super puzzle. Um, now, speaking of the Discord server, we released a bonus video this morning on the channel. I will link to it right there where I solve, I think I solve eight of the pencil puzzles that are being published daily in the pencil puzzle channel on Discord. I recommend them wholeheartedly to them to you. I mean, the video's good, but frankly, the puzzles themselves, you should give yourselves a couple of minutes every day to do them because they are, well, they're just a joy. Um, so certainly recommend those. Um, and that's all I've got to tell you about today. So with that, let's just get on with the rules of Star Warigami's puzzle. Um, quite pleased I managed to say that without stuttering. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply, travel around the world following the international whisper lines from Berlin to Moscow, the arrival hall at each airport, red, Right, so the arrival hall, the red cell, tells you the minimum difference between digits along the next leg of the journey, starting from the departure lounge in green. So let's think about whether we understand this. We'll stop here and just check. So this five is telling us that as we go from Berlin to Amsterdam, we leave the departure hall here, and every cell, every adjacent or adjacent digits along this line have to differ by at least five. So if this was an eight, this square here would have to be at least five different from eight. So this would have to be a one, two, or a three, and this would have to be a one, two, or a three. Uh, and that's how I think that rule is applying. And then we would eventually end up in Amsterdam, where this digit is going to tell us how far apart the digits on the next leg of our journey have to be, etc., until we end up all the way so we go, how do we go? We go Berlin, Amsterdam, London. In fact, the, that's a bit strange. The difference, the distance between Amsterdam and London by air is really not very far. It's certainly a lot less far than the difference distance from London to Los Angeles. So what we can already tell is that whisper lines are far more efficient or at least different ways of traveling. LA to Tokyo, Tokyo to Sydney, Sydney, Singapore, Singapore, Beijing, and finally to Moscow, um, which appropriately enough has a red square. Anyway, there's a couple more rules to tell you about. A terminal with a white control tower must contain consecutive digits. So those two digits must be consecutive. And a black control tower indicates the digits are in a ratio of one to two. So that, that tells us that in this domino, for example, one of the digits must be double the other one. Um, do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I guess we must start with the given five, do we? Oh, yeah, okay, that's really beautiful as well. Some of you may not know this if you're new to the channel, but there is a standard Sudoku variant rule called German Whispers, which involves lines having adjacent digits that differ by at least five. And look, this is a five and we are leaving Berlin. So this is a real German whispers line, which I like already. Um, and I can see that every, yeah, okay, I can see how this box sort of works because if we think about, uh, uh, we've got a five in the corner here. Every other cell in box one is on the whispers line. Now, I know because I've done a lot of German whispers in the past that the digits four and six are quite difficult on German whispers lines because imagine you tried to put a four here. You've now broken the puzzle because this square needs to be at least five different from four. Well, there is only one candidate for that, which is nine. That has the same problem. And you're always going to end up with two nines in the box. 
In other words, the same happens for 6 with 1s. In other words, the 4 and the 6 are going to have to be at the terminals. So we're going to have to put a 4 or a 6 here and a 4 or a 6 here. And then the next digit along the whisper line is always going to have to be a 1 or a 9. So if this was a 6, it'll be a 1. If this is a 4, it'll be a 9. And we can probably extend that further by thinking about the next difficult digits, which are the middly digits, because the middly digits push the next digits to extremes. So we're probably going to have to have 3 and 7 in those squares. Yeah, OK, if we think about 3, for example, what does that have to be flanked with on a German whispers line? Well, it has to be flanked with a 7 and an 8. Sorry, a 7 and an 8? What am I talking about? An 8 and a 9. <laughs> a knowledge bomb for Simon is that 5 different from 3 is at least 8. So these would have to be an 8 and a 9, but the 9 we know is in one of those squares. In other words, the 3 must flank one of these two squares, so it can never be in either of those two squares. So the 3 must be in one of these, as must the 7, for analogous reasons. So that's a 2 and that's an 8 hidden up here. Now, the next question, though, is how do we know the order of these? <laughs> I actually want this to be a 4, not for any reason to do with Sudoku. Well, sort of a reason to do with Sudoku, but because there is another variant rule uh, in Sudoku called a Dutch whispers line, which where the digits have to differ by four. And obviously, if we were leaving Amsterdam, this would be an appropriate Dutch whisper line. So I really want that to be a four and not a six. Six is going to be very tricky. Um, we'll have to have, if that's a six, oh, I see this. I forgot about the control tower as well. This digit here can't be a five look because of the five here, but we know it needs to be consecutive with four or six. So that must be a three or a seven. So actually, yeah, if this is a six, we know this is a seven. If this is a four, we know it's a three. Six, seven, one. Yeah, OK, there's a problem. Right, this is good. We are going to get a Dutch whispers line because this cannot be a six. And the way to realise this without doing too much heavy thought, and we don't believe in doing heavy thought, we, do, we, we believe in doing clean thought, like quick thought, cutting edge thought, get the logic that sort of gets to the point, um, which I'm not doing and I'm about to do. Why can't this be a six? Well, if we think about the nature of a whispers line, where the dif difference has to be a six between each consecutive digit, it's going to oscillate between low and high digits. So if you had an eight, the next digit will obviously have to be a two or a one, and then the digit after that will have to go up again. So you're going to get high, low, high, low, high, low. But with this whispers line here, if, the di if, if, if we put a six in, there are some digits we just can't include on this whisper line at all now. And those digits are 4, 5 and 6, because if we try and put a 4 in the whisper line, the next digit's going to be a 10, and that won't work. So, in fact, we might be able to do this. I was going to do it by oscillating logic, but we might be able to do it by straightforward Sudoku logic, because I'm now noticing that those six squares can therefore only be selected from 1, 2, 3, 7, 8 and 9. Um, but no, I'm going to do it by oscillating logic instead, because that's what I thought of first. Um, so we've got we've got oscillation going on, but we also know this is a seven because obviously this is a six. This is a seven. This is therefore low. And that means in this box, this digit, this digit and this digit are high digits and they have to be seven, eight and nine. And now the puzzle's broken because whichever one of these you make seven has to be flanked by two ones because we have to keep the digits that far apart. And that's that's impossible. You can't put two ones in here. You can't put two ones in here and you can't put two ones in there. Bingo. So we can get rid of seven, eight and nine from there. We can get rid of six, seven from here. We must make this a four. We must make this a three. And we have a Dutch whispers line coming down to London, um, where presumably we're sort of circling above the airport for some time in order to keep the journey going for this length of line. Um, ah, no, hang on. And that being four 
means that's a six, and that's going to determine the whole of box one. That now has to be, yeah, that has to be the one, that has to be the nine. Then we have to oscillate, so seven, three, well, let's oscillate in the right order. So we have to do that. And you can see the, the sort of parity logic I was mentioning about high, low, high, low. It does apply for lines that have to have five difference at least. So we go high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. Um, now, yeah, the tricky thing about a Dutch whisper line is the annoying digit five, which unfortunately exists. And the nature of five is annoying because it it gives the opportunity for a Dutch whispers line not to oscillate strictly. Because if, for example, on the line you see a nine, the next digit doesn't have to be low. It could be five, and then the next digit could be one, not in this puzzle because of the one here, but ignore Sudoku for a moment. You can have a string on a Dutch whispers line of 951, and now you don't have oscillating parity. We have a nine here, we should have a high digit here if we have retention of parity, but we don't. So we have to therefore, well, it's just much less constrained. Um, now, can we use that to our advantage or not? We know this digit is at least four different from three, so that digit is high. Um, so that if there is no change of parity, we'd have low, 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 and this digit should be high. Uh, and that digit can't be seven or nine, so that digit would, if there was no change of parity, this would be six or eight. And it couldn't be eight, because if that's an eight, this would have to be a four in order to make sure our black control tower works. And four is impossible. So if there is no change of parity, that is a six. Uh, I'm just sorry, I'm just trying to see if I can see why that's a problem. If the, Well, if there's no change of parity as well, you can't put five on the Dutch Whispers line. Because if you do put a five on the Dutch Whispers line, you always force the change of parity because, of course, the digits that flank the five have to be four different. So in this example, you'd have to go nine one to avoid the one up here. Um, but so if this was six and we're saying there's no change of parity, this square would have to be a five by Sudoku because we couldn't put five on the line and we couldn't put five in the black dot because we can't put 10 next to it. And it's all getting complicated. So the, the issue with this is I can't see what's wrong with it. Um, now, if we do have a change of parity, all bets are off, basically, because we can, uh, unless we have to sort of try and work out what these ones and nines do to that. Is this digit restricted? Because it can't be two, four and eight, and it's on a black dot. Maybe this is a better idea. Let me just think about this for a second. This digit, if we think about the nature of a black dot in a Sudoku, because it has to be whatever digit we put in this square has to be capable of being doubled or halved, the only options for the square are one, two, three, four, six, and eight. And here, three of those options have been removed. So this is one, three, or six. And it, oh, it's not six because there's a three here. So this digit is one or three, which means this digit is six or two. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely beautiful. So that is beautiful setting. Star Warigami, take a bow. I, I now know, I now know this is a six. That is so beautiful. Right, let me explain why. If this is a two, we know this is a one. The moment this is a one, I can't change the parity now on this line anymore because I can't put a five on it. If I can't put a five on it, the parity must be preserved. But when we look at this, this is high. So those three are low and this should be a high digit. But the parity is, it's not, it's a two in this instance. So I need to change the parity by putting five on the line, which I can't do because there's no one on it. Um, so it, you reach a contradiction. And that means, and let, I suppose what I could do is just show, it, it should be possible to just show this breaks now. 
uh, it will break because of that logic. That logic is, I think, tight. Um, but let's actually try and actually force it and see if we can make the line work, which we shouldn't be able to do. So I did, we need a difference of three from that digit. So this digit is at least, it's a maximum value of six. If that's a nine, that could be a six. Um, oh no, six, sorry, we're at four difference. I was thinking we're at three difference for a moment. No, five or three, that's the only options for this square. So this square is a minimum of seven. Oh, but it can't be seven. That would, this square would be forced to be an eight because it couldn't be a nine. Then this square, we're looking at four different again. So this square has got to be, it can't be one, two. Uh, so this has got to be three or four, I think. Um, so this square, we're going up again and we need to go to at least, oh, so that can be seven or nine. And then this square, we need to go down again. And so this is five or lower. Uh, so this is five, which you, you can see, well, that, that's it. There's, there's the key point. We've proved that this is a five or lower, but in turn, it needs to be six or higher by looking at this digit because it needs to, these have to be four apart as well. And that's, that's where it would break. So we, I did that in a slightly shorthand way using parity but you can see if we did it the longhand way, we could prove exactly the same thing. So this square here is a six. This square here is a three. We now, oh yeah, this is gorgeous now. Now we know, because we know parity is perfectly preserved along the line, we were expecting a high digit here because this is high. We're gonna go high, high, high. And therefore there can be no five on the Dutch whispers line. And therefore that square's a five. Um, now, what can we do next? That square, I suppose, has got to be, it's got to be four different from six. So it's got to be one or two, because uh, it obviously can't be 10. This digit has got to be low, because yeah, we're, we're, we're preserving parity. So this is low. Oh, I see, this square's a one. It can't be two, three, four, or five. So it's got to be low. This has now got to be high and it can't be six, seven or nine. That's eight. This has got to be low. It's got to be, oh, that can be two or four. Oh, but there we go. This one is going to be useful. That's going to force the two, force the four. These squares are seven and nine. And we can see we can't put seven here because it wouldn't be four apart from four. So that's the nine, that's the seven, and that's box four done. And that is absolutely beautiful. Um, and we've now arrived in Lo Ooh, we've arrived in London with a difference of six for our next trick our next leg of the journey so now this square's got to be a nine it's got to be six different from three that fixes that as a seven let's not forget Sudoku today I'm so prone to doing that uh, but look I did it there there and there I did this I did the Sudoku this square's now got to be low so that's got to be one two and three we do have oscillation along this line Oh, oh, and actually I'm noticing, maybe with by Sudoku I can really limit the contents here. So let's actually fill in these options. We've got six, seven, and nine here. We've got one, four, and five there. And we've got two, three, and eight here. Well, we spoke earlier about if you have a six as the difference on the line, you can never put four or five or six on the line because the next digit's going to be too far away to be within the one to nine bounds of the Sudoku digits. So this square is the one. Um, now, this square can't be a six for the reasons I just mentioned. This square now is forced to go high, so that's got to be eight. We've got to come into LA, so this can't be three because it would only be five different. That's two. The black dot tells us this is a four. I could have done that by noticing this can't be a five because of black dot logic, but we did it. We did it the way I think Star Warigami would have approved of. Um, that's not a one anymore. So this can't be a seven anymore because seven cannot be six away from two or three. So that's a nine. These are six and seven. This square is uh, six. No, that square is not known. Oh, it is known by Sudoku. There's me congratulating myself on doing Sudoku there and forgetting to do it here. Never mind. We are still going. We're now in LA, but we only have 
a two difference to get to Tokyo. So actually this can be either. And this feels like it's going to be more tricky because when digits have to be at least two apart, there's an awful lot of flexibility. We don't have anything like this parity logic going on. This, yeah, okay, this black dot though, can't have one, two or eight on it. So it's not one, two, it's not two, four, it's not four, eight, it is three, six. Which means that, can we do something with that? It feels very hard for this to be if this is six, then the Tokyo to Sydney journey is utterly broken. There we go. As I really like the logic in this. It's really elegant because look, if this is six, now we know that along this whispers line here, we can never put four, five and six on the whisper line. And therefore in box five, where are we going to put the four, five and six in this square? All of them all of them, one on top of the other. And that's going to give this an even bigger problem than a Schrodinger cell. Not possible. So this cannot be six. Um, therefore, that's the six. This is the three. Oh, OK. So we get a three difference on this line, which is a lot less. It puts this line in a lot less of a pickle, basically. Um, Sudoku tells us there's a three in one of those squares. Two five nines over there. This digit has to be at least three. It can't be nine. It's got to go down. OK, this digit here, if we go up on the whisper line, we could put a nine here, except there's a nine by Sudoku that rules it out. So it got to, we've got to go down. So it's got to be a one or a two, which I guess means this is not a three because three wouldn't be three away from that. So we can get a three. So this square has to be at least a six and it's not a six or a nine. So that oh, it's not a seven. That's an eight. Let me just double check that. That felt a bit too, a bit too easy if, in a way. Um, this is it's three away at least from three. So it can't go down. So it's going up. It can't be six. Yeah, it can't be. I think it is eight. Um, so this digit is also three away. But this time it can be six. That was me getting worried for a moment there. I was thinking, what on earth can I put in this square? But it can be six, thank goodness. So this square is coming down again. And it can't be two or three. So that's a one, I think. And that's a two. These squares are five and four. We can do the order. And box five is done. Wow. And and we've got loads of extra information now about box six as well. Uh, we can do some Sudoku. I can place a six here. We can, there's a two in one of those cells. This column looks awfully constrained. We've got one five, that's a one or a five. And that's a one or an eight. And that's a one, five or eight. And what are we working with here? Two, two away. No, we could, we could all options still on the table for that square. I thought we might be able to restrict it. Um, OK, so where is the easy? Uh, probably it's over here, isn't it? This is where we should be looking, I think. OK, let's do this. So we're going to have to look at twos, fives and nines into those cells and threes, sixes and sevens into these cells and ones, fours and eights into those squares. Now, what is restricted? This square has to be three different, so it's not four. <laughs> um, oh, that's annoying. Okay, what are those three squares as well? I've not done these, fours, fives, and sevens. So our Sydney journey is, Sydney is better in the sense that it's at least we're dealing whatever this is, it's a relatively high digit. Oh, it's not. S oh, right. This is right. Beautiful, beautiful. What what what's the maximum difference between these two cells? Well, if that was a three and that was a seven, the maximum I can make these two cells differ by is four. So that is a four. It definitely can't be five or seven. So now. This is a white dot. 
which means that cell is three or five using the uh, white or well, the white control tower logic. Oh, five, seven in the box, so it's a three. Now this square is at least uh, seven. Sorry, uh, yeah, it is seven, isn't it? Seven, eight, nine. I can't type. My typing has gone up, up the swanny. Now, if that's seven, that cell's broken. In fact, this, this has to go nine, five, given that given the the differences we're working with. Um, and that might be useful. That gets me a two here. We know that they were a three and a seven. I needed to keep them four apart. So that becomes a six. If we make this five, it's never four apart from seven. So this is nine. This is five. Now it can't be seven anymore. Three and seven go in. Now this he needs to be four away. So that's got to be one. That's eight. And that's four, I think. That all felt fairly smooth. So hopefully it was correct. Um, and where shall we look for our next trick? This square, I suppose, is, yeah, we're still traveling along the German Whispers line. So this square here has to be four different, at least, from nine. So this square, oh, it's not five. So it's a low digit. It's a one or a two. Which means this digit is either a one, a two, or a four because of the black control tower. And now we can say that... What can we say here? Um, oh, oh dear. Yeah, that's going to be bad as well. If this is a one, then basically there's no restriction at all on the Singapore to Beijing leg. Just all we know is the digits have to be one apart, at least. And that's axiomatically true of all Sudoku digits. Uh, 2689. Um, seeing if I can do any Sudoku. I think that square has to be in. Eight or a nine by Sudoku. What about this row, this white dot? I've not really thought about this white dot. Um, you, yes, okay. This is okay, isn't it? What is on this white dot? And the answer is I haven't really got a clue, but I can say it's not a one-two pair because if it was a one-two pair, this cell would have no value. So it must be, these two cells must be selected from the digits six, seven, and eight, which means they must have a seven on them in order to make sure that they're a consecutive sequence. That's not an eight by Sudoku. That's not a six by Sudoku. Oh, and how could that, oh, bobbins. No, okay, I was about to say, how could this be a seven? Because surely the journey on from the, from Moscow was going to be completely broken if we had to keep the digits seven apart but moscow is the end of the journey so yeah we're in red square and we finish the journey there so that's actually yeah that's not helpful <laughs> um okay but where do one and two go in row three and the answer to that is i don't know except i do know they're in those three squares so if the ones if the ones and the twos are over there that square's got to be a because it can't be a one or a two and that fixes this by black dot logic so now and that one now fixes this and we are cooking with gas this square is a six or an eight by sudoku oh uh, we're not looking at a difference of one on this line which is good um so probably we've got to pencil mark this line i don't know let's think we've got a two difference at least now this square can't be low because it sees one two three and four so we've got to go higher so it's at least six it's not six it's not seven. Oh, it's not eight oh, good grief okay so this is a nine therefore that's an eight that's a six out of nowhere now coming down here we need a two at the bottom i think these squares have got to be three, five, and seven, so we can place five. I'm, I'm going to actually put this in, and then I'm going to check this line to check I've not made a mistake. So we need everything to be two apart. They are only just okay. I think everything is working, and now I get a five, so I get a, I get back to German whispers on the final leg of the journey from Beijing 
to Moscow. And this is high under German. Oh, in fact, it's known. It's a seven and that's an eight because of this six here. So this is a low digit. Um, it's got to be five different. It's a one or a two. It's not a two. So that's one. That's a five. Um, so this is a high digit. It can only be a nine. It's the only digit left in the box that's high and available. So this is a four, which is five apart just, and that's a two, and that still looks like we haven't made a mistake. Now seven and nine down here. What do we need down there? We need four and something, four and five. Uh, we can probably do this with this line once I've put the options in. So let's just finish the options off coming down the columns and then we'll finish off the puzzle. One and six, and down here we just need an eight. And that eight looks rather good, doesn't it? That all goes in, that goes in, that goes in, and four and five go in. And I think we've finished that. Let's just check this line where we put two, we've got to make two difference. Only just, only just, yes, 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 only just, and yes. So I think this might be correct, and it is. Wow enjoyed that mightily star warigami take a bow that was very very clever it'd be very easy for a puzzle like this to get awfully fiddly but it wasn't because the logic was so clean i love the fact that you could basically fill in all but everything in box one but then i think that the whole the whole beauty of the puzzle is encapsulated by the choice around this square and how you fill in box four one, you can work out it's a Dutch whisper using parity, and then you can work out that this, if this can't have a change of parity because of this beautifully selected black dot here, and the inability of having, if you have a 2-1 pair to flick the parity, you lose the ability to change that parity by having a 1 on the line. I love that. It's absolutely, it's so clever. Such a clever setting. Um, I hope you had a go. I hope you got on well. Let me know in the comments. I do enjoy them, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Mm -hmm.